Hello friends, welcome to SQL practical question series. So here is another interesting question that I have received from one of the subscriber. First let me tell you what is the question is about, then I will show you what the logic I am just going to follow so that it is easy for you to follow when I am writing this SQL. So the expectation is, we have a transaction table which contains the transaction date and transaction amount. For example in this case like I have like 3 transaction date 20th July, 21st July and 30th July and transaction amount like 100, 200 and 300. The expectation is we need to expand the date range from 20th July till 30th July and wherever there is no transaction we just need to repeat the same value. Say so in this case the 100 has to repeat it till 24th. For 25th anyway it is like 200. So for 30th we have 300. So for rest of the uh, rows whatever the previous value has to be repeated so this is the expectation fine now let me show you what is the logic i am going to follow so that it is easy for you to follow when i am showing you the sql what i am going to do here is i am just going to compute the minimum date and the maximum date from the given transaction table so in this case it is like 20th july the maximum date is 30th july the number of days between 20th and 30th is like 10 days but we need to expand from 20th till 30th it is actually 11 days because when we simply subtract two dates it excludes one date and give the difference so what we need to do we need to just uh, repeat the day uh, for 11 days so what i'm going to do i'm just going to print a sequence starting from 0 to 10 so which is nothing but 11 row uh, in one of the previous video i have already uh, showed you how to print a sequence of number probably you can use the same logic here so after printing the sequence what i'm going to do i'm just going to print the minimum days now what i'm going to do i'm just going to add the number of days and the minimum day so that this will give the sequence of dates starting from 20th till 30th now that we have like one data set that is a transaction table another data that is the list of date now you can join the transaction date or the transaction table with the list of date so uh, specifically like outer join so that will get a result set like this so wherever the transaction informations are there that will get printed here uh, since we are using the outer join so the extra records also will be getting something like this so once you get an output like this, now the expectation is we need to print all the null values with 100. So in this case, we need to print all the 100. Similarly, after 25th, we need to print 200. So this we can print using analytical function. So once you are able to print this, this is what our expected output. I hope now it would be a little bit clear. Probably now I'll, I'll show you the SQL so that it will be much more clear. Here is the transaction table I am creating. Okay, the table is created. I am populating three transaction record. The records are populated. I am committing the data. Let me just select from the transaction table. So we have like uh, three records like 20th July, 25th July and 30th July. Now let us see how to write the SQL. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the information from transaction data table. First thing I'm going to select the minimum date. So I'm using the min function. Same way I'm using the max function to get the maximum date. Now we can subtract the maximum date and the minimum date to get the number of days between both. Okay, so let me just give a meaningful alias here. MI for minimum and mx for maximum let me give num for the number of days so now i'm going to make this as a with class query let's say with d as the whole select statement then i'm selecting from d okay now we got the minimum maximum and the number so now what i'm going to do i'm just going to select let me select row name I'm going to repeat the data for connect by level. 
let me say when I say less than or equal to 5 this gets repeated for 5 so the expectation is we need to repeat as per the uh, difference between the minimum date and maximum date so I'm just going to repeat as per the number of days so it is printing from 1 to 10 but what I need is like a 0 to 10 that is it should be totally it should be 11 record so let me just put num plus 1 so that it will print 11 but what I need is like 0 to 10 so I put row num minus 1 so either you can put a row num or you can put a level fine this is our first column now from the uh, actual query I am going to select the minimum date also now you can see like we have a sequence number and we have a minimum date now we can add the sequence number and the minimum date so that we will get the date range let me give an alias like dt okay now let me make this also as a with class query d1 as you can give a meaningful uh, name here i just gave d1 here select star from d1 so now we have got the uh, list of date ranges so another table actually we have tx data table which has like uh, only the transaction data whereas like d1 has like list of date range now we can join these two results it so d1 and this one where d1 dot date equal to tx data dot date so this is like equi join that's why we are getting only three record let us make it as a left outer join so i'm using the plus operator let me order the result set by the uh, date range column okay now since this is the left outer join we got the additional record so wherever there is a non-matching record you are just getting a null value here so either you can use the plus operator here or you can use the left outer join keyword left outer join on like this in fact both are exactly similar fine now we just got the date ranges anyway let us select whatever the column we need so let me select only the date and amount okay now we need to just repeat the amount so wherever there is a null so let me put one more amount column here okay now what i'm going to do i'm just going to use last underscore value okay uh, that is the analytical function over order by d1 dot date okay the key learning here you need to use the ignore nulls now if you see the value gets repeated wherever there was a null value so anyway we are not interested in the actual amount column so let me remove this let me give a meaningful alias here saying that amount so now if you see this is our expected output so whatever the query i have showed you i have uh, posted in this blog link and all the interview questions i have posted in the in the blog link given below both these links are given in the description if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video if you want any questions to be answered you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id and thanks a lot for watching this video